Hi there, I'm Paul Mitchell, leadership coach, author, and founder of The Human Enterprise. You've probably heard the odd motivational speaker in your life, um, all of, uh, of whom have a, a, a strong message for us, and I, I love those messages. And yet, um, how important is it that someone's climbed Mount Everest five times, or they've killed 19 alligators with their bare hands, or, or, or swum uh, the, the English Channel underneath the water? two or three times. I'm probably over-exaggerating a little bit here. That's obviously my stuff. But my point is, although these are great acts of courage, I do not believe we are honouring, we are acknowledging, we are seeing the everyday acts of courage that exist in our world and particularly in our workplace. So what do I mean by everyday acts of courage? What about a working mother who uh, has been so close to a child, but she has to let that child off at kindy um, having been up late all night preparing for a presentation that day. The tears are falling down the kid's, kid's eyes, but she has to drive away and just let, in some ways, part of her identity go. That's everyday courage. What about someone who um, works full-time at a job, uh, you know, day in, day out, and then comes home of an evening to look after some, some, some sick parents, um, not knowing whether they're going to get any better, not knowing whether or not they'll have a life beyond looking after their parents. That's everyday courage. What about someone who's been told they're stupid or dumb or whatever, but says, you know what, I'm going to have a go at going to university or going to TAFE to get myself a qualification. Um, and even though at school they failed, even though they probably had the dunce hat on their head at, at, at some point or were, were meant to feel like they were never going to be any good um, in, in higher education. That's everyday courage. What about when uh, senior management say, oh, that's a great idea, fantastic, let's go for it. And you put your hand up and say, look, I don't think that is such a great idea. That's everyday courage. So here's what I'd love you to do. First of all, honour it. Um, you know, it. It's all around you. Honour it, acknowledge it. Secondly, develop it yourself. And thirdly, as a leader, create an environment where everyday courage becomes the new norm. So how do you honour it? Well, very simple, just credit it or acknowledge it when it happens. Someone pushes back on you at a meeting and just say, hey, thank you, that's the sort of pushback I want. I really appreciate that, it makes us all better. Um, secondly, develop it yourself. Get used to saying, I stuffed up. Um, I can't do this by myself. I'm struggling. Um, I need help. Um, be courageous in, in the way you connect with people, the way you ask for collaboration. And thirdly, and most importantly, drive out fear. Create an environment which is not fearful, but fearless. It was Edward Deming had 14 points of, of management, although they were due to, do, to do with quality, they were to do with great management or great leadership. And his eighth point was drive out fear. You will never, ever get people behaving at their best if you have an environment of fear. Um, so have an environment where people speak up where, they, where, they, where they, they say what they need to say. We have an expression sometimes in, in, in grief counselling, uh, if you can mention it, you can manage it. Create an environment where people feel comfortable mentioning whatever it is. I was actually taken to task the other day, and rightly so, when I said, well, that was a very courageous thing for someone to say. And, and uh, one of the, uh, the, the, the team members said to me, well, you know, Mitch, that's the problem. If we keep labeling uh, people that talk up as courageous, then there's something wrong with our environment that we label it as courageous. This should be the new norm. The question is, of course, how do we create environments that are courageous? How do we create environments that drive out fear? I saw one manager had a thing called stuff up of the week and people would come up, I'm not saying everyone deliberately stuffed up, but everyone would talk about the stuff up. So they'd talk about the issues, they'd talk about the problems, they'd make it okay to do that. Uh, another great question you can ask as a leader is, okay, great, what do we learn from this? So people realise that, uh, hey, failure's all part of it. In fact, if you want great innovation, you will never have great innovation unless you can drive out fear. Uh, ideas, great ideas, do not germinate, do not grow in a, in, a, in, a, in a toxic swamp of fear. Drive out fear. 
A great example of this is a very old story of Tom Watson, who was the um, managing director of IBM many years ago. And one of his sales reps was going for a big, big job with a, with a government organization and failed to get that job. So he handed in his resignation to Tom because he didn't want Tom to fire him. And Tom said, you know, why would I, why would I even accept your resignation? Um, uh, we've just spent a million dollars on your leadership development because that's what, was, what the cost was of the contract. That sort of mindset that, hey, if we're going to fail, let's fail fast and learn from it, drives out fear, enables people to take more risks. It enables people to, um, to, to get the, the very best out of themselves. What are some key takeaways from Everyday Courage? Number one honor it. Every time you see small acts of courage, credit it, let people know that's the sort of behavior we want around here. Number two, model it. Be a living, breathing role model of the behavior you wish to have in the world. And that is the behavior of, of, of speaking up and being courageous and being vulnerable. And thirdly, drive out fear. Make it okay to fail. Make failure the first step in the learning process. I promise you, if you do that, you'll have a much more engaged workplace and a much more productive and profitable one as well. I'm Paul Mitchell. Find the passion, develop the skills, make the numbers and make a difference. Thanks for watching. I hope you've got some great tractionable ideas or takeaways from that video. I'd like to now introduce you to our latest program, Basecamp Leadership Essentials real skills for future leaders. And it really is very much a skills-based program. It's a one-day program, and it's for leaders who are up and coming that may not even be in leadership roles yet, or leaders who've been newly appointed, or even for leaders who've possibly been in their role for a couple of years and need a bit of a turbo boost. Two big aspects of the program. One is, what is the leadership mindset required for growth to take people uh, to the next level and the leader themselves to the next level? And the second component, as I said before, the real specific skill bases that are required. So if you believe that great culture is important in your business and great culture comes from great leadership and great leadership comes from leadership at every level, we'd love you to think about Basecamp please go to basecampleadership.com.au and explore the possibility of bringing the program to your organization. We look forward to partnering with you.